You may remember the last GPU that AMD launched. It was slow, it was limited, it was missing vital key features that streamers and editors wanted. Yep, I'm talking about the 6500 XT, or as most called it, the biggest flop of 2022. <laughs> and we're only five months in. So that kind of says everything you need to know about that. Luckily, the rest of the stack from the RX 6600 upwards is actually pretty good, but getting hold of one has been the sticking point, along with every other graphics card on the market, not just from AMD, but from Nvidia as well. Well, today sees the <clears throat> oh so refreshing 6650 XT join the fold in the hope of bringing gamers a bit more choice for a reasonable-ish price with some solid 1080p performance. But is it just a way of AMD trying to flog you old technology? Or is this actually a viable proposition for those striving to get hold of a GPU? And more importantly, can it beat the 3060 Ti from Nvidia? Well, before we find out, here's a quick word from this video sponsor. Hello mate, you all right? Yeah, just got all the bits for my banging new gaming PC. Just gotta put it together. It's gonna be so much better than yours. Oh, right. What did you get then? The latest Intel 12th gen processor, a feature patched motherboard and 32 gig of DDR4 memory. See, miles ahead of yours. <laughs> you, you realize that board needs DDR5 memory, don't you? Don't tell me you went and bought the wrong stuff. DDR4 is so 2014. I can't believe you was that stupid. <gasps> what? No, you're joking. What should I get then? For me, I'd be looking at Corsair's newest Vengeance DDR5 kits, or if you're wanting that all important RGB, then go for the Dominator Platinum RGB. Oh, you are a lifesaver, thanks. But where can I find out more? By clicking the link in the description below, of course. <laughs> you call me the stupid one. So first things first, let's talk about specs. Firstly, this isn't the only card launching today. Along with it, there's also the 6750 XT and 6950 XT, which make sure you're subscribed as we have content on those cards in the kind of next few days. Though, if you can't wait that long, head on over to etechnics.com for the full written reviews on them. So back to the 6650 XT. Being a refresh, it's best to kind of compare it and see how it compares against the 6600 XT on paper, because essentially they're the same card, just with a few tweaks here and there. So what have AMD actually managed to do to create disparity between each of the cards, especially if you're being asked to pay more money for it? And while it's only $20 more when comparing the $399 launch price with the $379 that the 6600 XT launched for last year, it's still something. And from a performance point of view, that puts it right on par with the launch price of the RTX 3060 Ti, which relatively speaking, is better than the 6600 XT in performance benchmarks. So I guess what I'm trying to say is, can this bridge that gap and give us something potentially even better than the 3060 Ti? especially as it's not been available for its MSRP price since it launched and instead is found a bit more expensive at retail. So what's, what's the difference? Well, it has all the same specs in terms of compute units, infinity cache, memory, and so on. It still uses the PCI Express 4.0 X8 interface, which again, at least on paper, lacks behind both the 3060 and the 3060 Ti. There are two areas that have changed. The first being the total board power, which has increased from 160 watts on the 6600 XT to 180 watts on the 6650 XT. And the other key area, which should obviously help to increase performance closer or even above the 3060 Ti, is the fact that the game clock has been increased from 2,359 megahertz on the 6600 XT to 2,410 megahertz on the 6650 XT. And consequently, the boost clock has also increased from 2,589 megahertz on the 6600 XT to 2,635 megahertz on this one. On top of this, AMD have also increased the memory clock from 16 gigabits per second to 17.5 gigabits per second. So basically what we essentially have here is a slightly overclocked 6600 XT with a little more power unlocked. That's about the crux of it. But from a card that's even being called a refresh by AMD themselves, did we really expect much else? Probably not. 
But let's find out why we're really here and take a look at those glorious benchmarks. And as always, if you want to see even more data, we'll be posting all of that up on our Patreon. Link is down below and it helps support us like you wouldn't believe. As always, we tested our suite of benchmarks and games on our X570 GPU test system with a Ryzen 9 5900X, Notua D15S cooler, 32 gig of Corsair Dominator Platinum 3600 MHz memory, and a Zeus Crosshair 8 Dark Hero motherboard. We've also kept resizable bar, or as AMD call it, smart access memory disabled, as those on older GPUs who are wishing to compare simply wouldn't be able to, as they are lacking that feature and we strive to be as fair as possible here. The spec system is also down below if you want to check out each part individually, but for now, let's get into the tests. So starting with 3D Mark Firestrike, and straight away we see an increase over the 6600 XT. Sadly, it's only a 3% increase, so nothing a small overclock wouldn't help you achieve instead. The card, even with its faster speed, still fell behind the 3060 Ti as well. Moving over to Firestrike Ultra, and we see a similar story again of around 3.9% over the 6600 XT. The RTX 3060 Ti still storms ahead by quite some margin, but it is good to see the 5700 XT still holding its own for an older generation card. When looking at 3D Mark Time Spy, the increase was slightly larger at 5.9%, but nothing to really shout home about. The NVIDIA 3060 Ti really does storm ahead here, showing that while this refresh card has some faster clocks, NVIDIA still has the upper hand. Now, not to sound too much like a broken record, but Time Spy Extreme showed the same 4-5% increase on the 6650 XT over the 6600 XT that we saw in the previous tests. Again, the RTX 3060 Ti is in a league of its own, with a 25% increase over the 6650 XT. I knew coming into this that AMD were going to fall slightly behind Nvidia when it came to ray tracing, and while the 6650XT does improve upon the 6600XT by around 6%, it's still nothing in comparison to the 3060Ti, which in FPS alone has a 50% lead. In our last synthetic benchmark, we saw the 6650XT with a 5% lead over the 6600XT while the 3060 Ti stormed ahead by a huge margin. So moving over to some games, and first up is Assassin's Creed Valhalla. We suddenly see a complete 180 with the 6650 XT sitting ahead of the 3060 Ti by five, yes, five frames per second. Admittedly, margin of error and retesting could see these results get a little closer, but I'm gonna chalk that up as a win for AMD. As we move up to 1440p, the results fall much more in line with the RTX 3060 Ti pushing ahead by 3 frames per second. There's a small bump from the 6600 XT up to the 6650 XT, again only by around 4%, but sadly it's just not enough to make me say wow. At 4K, the RTX 3060 Ti really does storm ahead at 50 frames per second, while the 6650 XT gives us exactly the same performance as the 6600 XT. Remind me, what are you meant to be paying for again? Moving over to Borderlands 3, and again, the performance increase on the 6650 XT over the 6600 XT isn't even worth entertaining. Again, it also shows that for its supposed price, the 3060 Ti, if you can get it for its MSRP, is still the better buy. At 1440p, we see a small margin between both AMD cards and a bigger one when looking at the 3060 Ti. If you think 3 frames per second is worth the extra cost over the 6600 XT, then by all means, that's up to you. But me, I just don't see it. At 4K, I'm now at a point where I'm even wondering if it's worth looking at any more titles. Summed up, the 6650 XT is 3% better than the 6600 XT, and still way behind Nvidia. Moving over to something newer, and we start to see a bit more of a performance increase, but still only 7% in front of the 6600 XT, while the RTX 3060 Ti has already finished the race and collected the trophy. At 1440p, that 7% lead narrows back down to 4%, shows that Nvidia clearly have the superior product at this price point. Should I carry on? At 4K, the 6650 XT manages to find a little more juice, but even then it still only sits 8% in front of the 6600 XT and still way behind the 3060 Ti, which manages to sit comfortably above that magical 60 FPS number that everyone craves. Okay, Godfall, a new title that is geared more towards AMD, and Nvidia wins again. The 3060 Ti storms ahead at 1080p, and the 6650 XT sits at a lowly 1% better than the 6600 XT. At 1440p, I'm starting to lose the will to live. And it's the same 3% improvement that we've seen in almost every other benchmark. It's just 
not enough. And with the 3060 Ti showing huge performance leaps over it, if I had $399, I think it's easy to see where my money would go. At 4K, same story, same FPS, Nvidia wins. What am I even doing here? It's frustrating as I know this is a refresh, but I was just expecting something better than what we're seeing here today. Horizon Zero Dawn, 1080p, and it's very much the same story. 2% improvements over the 6600 XT, and Nvidia still way ahead. 1440p, it's the same again, 2% again. I'm starting to think that AMD have released this card for no other reason than to try and profiteer and to clear out some stock ready for the next generation of cards. At 4K, the 6650 XT even gets beaten by the lower priced RTX 3060, while the Ti still sits comfortably ahead, making it the better card if comparing both cards at their launch pricing. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, another AMD focused title, and I'm starting to repeat myself a little bit with the same 2% performance increase over the non-refresh. The 3060 Ti still shows it's the far superior card, even in titles that favor the other manufacturer. At 1440p, while the frame rate is nice at 99, it's still only a 3% gain over the 6600 XT. And older cards like the 5700 XT are still managing to hold their own at similar frame rates. Speaking of those older cards at 4K, they were right on the hills of the 6650 XT. If you are rocking one of these older generation GPUs, I definitely look to stick with it, at least for now. Moving on to Watchdog Legions, a title that is generally favored by Nvidia GPUs, and we see some respectable frame rates at 113 FPS. All is good in the world, apart from the fact that the improvement over the 6600 XT is a measly 1%. Is this seriously what consumers are offered now? Damn. At 1440p, the 6650 XT showed 0% improvements over the 6600 XT. I am now officially lost for words. I have none. Zilch. Zip. Moving on. At 4K, it was the same story with a 2% lead and nothing really to shout home about. And the similarly priced card from Nvidia continued to show it was superior at this price point. So now that pure rasterization is out of the way, it's time to look at ray tracing and starting with Dirt 5. And it doesn't change. It's an improvement, but a 2% one at that over the non-refresh card. Nvidia also clearly showed they are the masters of ray tracing. At 1440p, that gap increases slightly to around 6% and gives us some decent numbers, but with just not enough disparity to make it what I'd consider worth it. At 4K, it's the same story with me really struggling to see why anyone would pay extra for this card over a 6600 XT, or why anyone would buy this card over the 3060 Ti instead. In Godfall, it's respectable, sure, but not in any sense of adding any extra worth over the 6600 XT, with only a 5% performance increase. Again, a simple overclock could garner the same results. 1440p again is the same, and at this point, I'm glad we're almost done with the benchmarking, as this is honestly quite painful to comment on now. At 4K, if anyone is still there watching this, instead of me commenting, I'll just say, if you appreciate what I had to endure to get these results, please consider supporting us over on patreon.com forward slash etechnics. Link is down below. Metro Exodus Enhanced Edition on the high preset still saw AMD falling behind Nvidia and a 5% boost over the 6600 XT. In all honesty, why does this card even exist at this point? Two frames here and two frames there, that's what 1440p will get you. And in my opinion, it's just not enough, especially as this card is $20 more expensive than the 6600 XT's launch price. Exactly the same story at 4K with only a two FPS lead, at least it's not the most depressing card AMD has launched this year. Though it is rather boring, I have to say. Luckily, we've come to the last test, so I can take a well-deserved break as we see the 6600 XT and 6650 XT with exactly the same performance proven that the 6650 XT is mathematically pointless. 1440p further proves my point, and I honestly think AMD are likely to get a lot of flack from this one, not just from reviewers, but from the consumers as well. Well, we made it. The last test, Watchdog Legion's 4K, high preset, ray tracing on ultra, and somehow it performed the worst out of all the cards we featured, with a lowly three frames per second. It even performed worse than the 6600 XT. Though right now, nothing surprises me with this card. Now, before we wrap things up, it's worth talking about the card I have here, as while it is a 6650 XT, 
It's not your typical MSRP based card and instead is part of Sapphire's Nitro Plus range of cards, which generally demand a $20 to $30 premium over a more basic MSRP card. But you do get some nice goodies for that extra money, including their hybrid fans, which can actually be removed for easy cleaning. You also get a dual BIOS switch and the ability to utilize ARGB pass-through for other devices that may use it through Sapphire's Trix Nitro Glow software. The card also comes with a pre-factory overclock as standard. So we find it comes in with a game clock of 2,523 MHz and a boost clock of 2,694 MHz. So quite a sizable jump up from the reference spec and a huge, I mean huge jump up from the 6600 XT reference specs. It also has even higher total board power coming in at 210 watts and is powered by a single 8 pin PCI Express power connector. In terms of the size, the card is a 2.5 slot card, so pretty typical of today's market for low to mid range cards, and comes in at 260 millimeters long, 130 millimeters high, and 57.57 millimeters thick. Design wise, it's pretty nice overall with a pretty solid aluminium backplate, a mixture of plastics in different colors, and those two large fans keeping temperatures under control. RGB is a a bit lacklustre with just a sapphire logo lighting up, which again can be controlled through the Nitro Glow software if you want that extra level of customization. Cooling wise, it's what you'd expect from a Nitro Plus model with ample cooling through a variety of heat sinks and heat pipes featuring a wave fin design. So where to start with the 6650 XT as a whole and the results? I mean, first and foremost, it's clear to see AMD are still lacking behind when it comes to ray tracing, especially when compared to Nvidia. So let's just say that and move on because hopefully the next generation of GPUs from Team Red will make up for their shortcomings. Now, when it comes to pure rasterization performance, you have to remember, this is a 6600 XT in drag. I mean, if anything, it's actually easier to just say that this is a super, overclocked 6600 XT and nothing more. It's a card that came out just under a year ago and in typical kind of AMD fashion, they've managed to find a, a little bit kind of more performance to eke out of it. And that all comes at a cost of more power and higher temperatures. I mean, it's not really rocket science. So let's not pretend that it's something it's not. Now I do feel AMD had a bit of an opportunity here to potentially stick it to Nvidia's 3060 Ti, considering that's the card that until now has been beating the RX 6600 XT and had the same launch price as the 6650 XT. Sadly, while the 6650 XT does offer slightly more performance in a few titles over the 6600 XT, it's still not where it needs to be to stick it to Nvidia's 3060 Ti. The funny thing is, even in AMD's reviewer's guide that they sent out to the media, there was no mention of the 3060 Ti and instead saw direct comparisons to the RTX 3060 non-Ti model, which it did beat and which launched at the cheaper price of $329. So yes, I'd expect a GPU that costs another $70 to perform better. If it didn't, then there'd be even more to worry about. Now, I know it makes me sound bitter, but I'm just getting a bit bored with these refreshes because while they do offer more, it's just not enough, especially considering stock will still likely be an issue. It's still the same silicon as the 6600 XT after all, and that's been a nightmare to get hold of too. Let me know what you guys think. I'm really interested here. Have we had enough of refreshes? Luckily, with all the rumors of new cards coming around the corner, we may not have to wait too long, but more than likely, we'll be seeing the same old stuff that we've seen with this generation all over again. High prices, low stock, exciting stuff, right? Either way, if you enjoyed this video, a like and a sub would be amazing. And if you really love what we do, signing up to our Patreon would be fantastic. And it gives you access to a ton of cool stuff, including a private area on Discord, behind the scenes content, exclusive giveaways, and so much more. And with that, I'll see you in the next one. See you later, guys.